Good morning. Welcome to chapel. We're so glad you guys are here. First things first, how many of you are planning to live on campus next semester? Okay, so then you should all listen really closely. Housing selection step one closes on Friday, February 28th. If you're looking for more information about that, make sure that you check your GCU email. There are tons of sports happening all around campus this week. We've got softball, basketball, volleyball, soccer on the club sports side, rugby, ice hockey, lots of, of activities for you guys to participate in and um, cheer on your fellow students. Next week in chapel, we'll have Vermone Pierre from Roosevelt Community Church. But this week, the one, the only, Tim Griffin. Make sure when he comes up in a little bit, you cheer really loudly for him. And again, thanks for being here. How are we doing this morning? Would you guys stand to your feet with us and get ready to worship?
sorrow comes to steal the joy out when brokenness and pain is all I know I'll be shaken no I'll be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance
your voice, you sing your name.
Father, all the glory this morning. Father, you are worthy of it all. Jesus, you are worthy of it all. God, we praise your powerful, your wonderful name this morning. Jesus, we thank you so much for your presence that's in this place. God, we pray that you would just be with us as we take on this week of school or work. Father, would your presence, your peace, just wash over us. Father, we worship you in this place. It's in your great and mighty name that we all pray. Everybody said amen. No doubt you've seen that video before. Um, Derek Redman was a sprinter who blew out his Achilles, or excuse me, his hamstring. And uh, in the middle of the, that worldwide stage, um, his father charged onto the field to help him make his way to the finish line. It's been shown millions of times around the world, and. Uh, every time I watch it, it messes me up. But I think most of us have probably felt like Derek, even though we weren't running on a track. Uh, we were in full stride, running our race, doing what we do, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, trouble comes. Disaster hits. And we're not sure what to do in that moment. And we're kind of frozen in time. I don't know where you're at right now in the semester or the school year, but uh, for those of you that are freshmen, you've been here through a fall and now you're at the uh, beginning part of the spring semester. And no doubt you've had some situations that have taken place over the last number of months where you feel a little bit like Derek. Some of your friends may know, some of your family may be aware of what uh, challenges you faced and the difficulties that you've had to push through. Maybe there have been those that have come alongside of you and helped you get through that incident to the, to the end of that uh, little chapter. 
Maybe some of you are knelt down right now in the middle of your lane trying to figure out what to do. It could have been an academic thing. It could have been a friend thing, a relationship. Didn't go quite like you thought it was going to go. An opportunity. It could have been a faith crisis. Maybe you're sitting here today and you're going, man, this thing's not working for me and I'm not sure what to do. I've tried this following Jesus and you know, in my heart of hearts, if anybody around me knew what I was thinking right now, they'd wonder about me. Life is full of these moments, these opportunities for us to meet reality uh, head on, to try to figure out what we're gonna do in that moment. You know, it's interesting, uh, Jesus, uh, there are many things that are not recorded in the scripture, but there are some very interesting scenes that are recorded about the life of Christ. And I want to turn your attention to Matthew chapter 11. For those of you that have a Bible, if not, you can look it up on your app. It will be on the screen. But Jesus is, uh, he, he's launched his public ministry and he's been, he's been teaching and preaching and proclaiming and interacting with people. And to be quite honest with you, up to this point of this passage that we're going to look at, he has been dropping some bombs. I mean, I think most of us uh, kind of think of Jesus a little bit like Mr. Rogers, you know, kind and sweet and tender. If you back up from Scripture and you look at it and you try to frame in your mind what must have been going on in some of those moments where he is just meeting uh, things head on, my guess is it wasn't quite like a Mr. Rogers scene. Jesus sometimes would go straight at the truth with folks. Hit them right between the eyes with it. And one of the things that really bothered Jesus was how the, the people, the masses, were being loaded up with all kinds of religious duty. And especially by those who were absolutely hypocritical about everything that they were telling other people to do. And it bothered him probably more than any other group those that would just pile on the weight of religion on the backs of the people. And he's just been hammering away. And you come to Matthew chapter 11, verse 25, and it says this. At that time, Jesus said, and this is a prayer. He says, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and reveal them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's some things I think that Jesus unfolds here about what will drive us to a place to where we will lean into him to find that rest, to find that restoration for our souls that we often need when we feel heavy and burdened by what life brings to us. There's four things I want to go through quickly here. Number one is a childlike faith. So, in the last three years, my wife and I have been given three grandchildren. It's awesome. So, I uh, spent a little bit of time yesterday uh, chasing them around the house while the Super Bowl was taking place, and congratulations to you Chiefs fans. And, oh, you're 
on the bandwagon, some of you, but enjoy it. And so much for San Francisco's charge to the championship. Some loyal fans. Are you cheering that they lost or cheering for? Oh, okay, that they made it, good. Great, that would have been really awkward for me. I don't know what I was gonna do after that. But now it's baseball season, right? Yeah, baseball is a lot. Spring training's around the corner. This month, pitchers and catchers report spring training in March, opening day in it. Oh, it's the greatest game. Well, one of the greatest games, but it's a great game. And it has nothing to do with my message. But when I was chasing our three grandkids around the, the living room yesterday as the game was on in the background, um, the oldest, who is about two and a half, his name is Calvin, and Calvin's got a significant and serious head of hair. Papa, 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 what? I love you. <laughs> Just flat knock me silly. And so, you know, I'll bark at him across the room and I'll say the same thing to him. There's something precious and fragile and innocent about the faith of a child, the love of a child. Look what Jesus says in verse 25 once again. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. There is something powerful when you come to Jesus in that innocent, loving way, just like a child. Second thing is in verse 27. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son. And catch that last phrase. And those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. This whole dynamic of spiritual life and spiritual vitality is birthed from the power of God in the person of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Some of you, it just seems like blinders, like you can't get exactly what Jesus is talking about. It doesn't make sense. And for some of us, you remember those days where you were kind of blinded to that truth, and it was like he just gave you sight, like there was light in the room for the first time. Do you remember that? Some of you that did not grow up in a Christian family or a church, and when you learned that Jesus loved you, you knew that he loved the world, but when it came to that point in time when the Spirit of God was working in your soul and in your mind to confirm to you that he loved you. And he wanted you to follow him, to be his child. And he called you to the cross and you laid yourself there, trusted all that you had and all that you would ever become into his hands for him to be your Lord and your Savior. Do you remember that? That is a work of the Spirit of God, not of religion, not of duty, not of tradition. It is a work of the Spirit of God, and Jesus is pointing out here, you cannot understand who I am or who my Father is unless it is revealed to you. It's a work, a spiritual work, that the Spirit of God does in the heart of a human being. I can't tell you, I've been, in all the years that I've been in ministry, and these are some precious times, but some of those moments when I'm walking down the promenade, or I'm in a neighborhood, or a coffee shop, or sitting in front of the union, and I'm visiting with a student or some individual, and you hear and see in their eyes the Spirit of God beginning to reveal to them who he is and how much he loves them. And he's calling them to be one of his children. It's a spiritual work. You can't do that through religion. That doesn't happen through duty. That happens because the Spirit of God goes to work in the heart and soul of somebody. To bring you to a place to where you know your soul is exhausted and you need Jesus to give you rest is a work of the Spirit. 
Thirdly, verse 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I wonder how many of you have been just kind of pulling yourself up and mustering up the strength to go do this and to go do that. And if the world only knew that you were done, inside you're spent. You've been doing this whole thing. You know, you know how to do the hands and the whole Jesus thing and when everybody's together. And inside you're vacant. Would you come to him once again and acknowledge your need? The fact that you're burdened and weary with life and all that is brought to you. Then last, in verse 29 through 30, he says, take my yoke. Follow me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's nothing like the world gives to you. You follow me and your life will be completely different. That's what those hearers Uh, Those listeners were hearing when Jesus was speaking those words. They're like, can it be that it's not what all these religious leaders are telling me? Could it be different? He's saying, come. Come and follow me. If you are tired and you're weary and your soul needs rest, Jesus is the source of that. Jesus is the one who can bring restoration to the soul and heart of a man or a woman who will go to them like a child, will crawl up in the lap of God and say, take me. I give up. I resign myself to you. I want to close with a great video. Um, In uh, seasonal fashion, This story shows a great clip of somebody coming alongside of somebody that was broken and stressed and overwhelmed by a set of circumstances. How this individual came alongside of him and was used in his life, much like it happens when those of us experience God's ministry in our lives through others and sometimes sometimes supernaturally. So after this, I'll pray for us. You ever have a paper out? I have the guy once. Okay. Well, chuck it like you would throw paper. When your arm gets here, just let go. Just let go. Okay. How do I catch it? Just stand there and stick your glove out in the air. I'll take care of it. Why I didn't win an Oscar, I don't know. One of my favorite movies of all time. Pray with me, would you? Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for what he has done for us on the cross, what he's done for us in our lives today, what he intends to do in our lives in the future. And Father, we come as best that we know how to say thank you. Thank you for those bennies that have been a part of our life, that have come alongside of us to help us to move forward to 
to overcome the difficulties of what we're experiencing. But more importantly, thank you for Jesus who meets us where our greatest need is. And will bring that rest to our hearts and our souls when we most need it. May he do that work in our lives today, we pray, for we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen? Amen. Have a great week. God bless you.